it's computer. I like to recording on my computer, so I cannot find it. Where is the cloud? Thank you all. Thank you for coming. I was welcome my older friend. She used to be a, a Chinese doctor and then she retired. And I was surprised she moved out from Dallas, go to the El Paso and now maybe move to the San Antonio. She was a traveling artist. Let's <laughs> welcome Patty Curry. Yay. Thank you. Thank you, Shiny. It's so good to see you. So today, while you generally, you can uh, introduce a lot of different art for us. Sure. I have been doing different kinds of art techniques for a long time. And I just tend to flow from one to the other because I find one technique and I really like it. And then I start applying it to something else. And then I go to something else. So I end up with a combination of types of art that I love doing. And I have to admit that some of it is influenced by my, my experience and my love of the Chinese medicine, which I still am practicing part-time. I just can't walk away from it completely. So I'm a, an artist and, and a practitioner and just having a blast with both of Hello. them. So. Okay, I have some guests. Hello. They have a song. So let me uh, mute everybody, okay? <laughs> Sorry, mute all, and then mute all. And uh, Patty, I need you to open your microphone again, okay? So let's start our... Okay. Okay, on? got it. <laughs> okay, let's go start it. All right. Welcome our artist today, Bonbon bon Artist, Patty Curry. Thank you so much. Who is it? It's our <laughs> artist tonight. Is she beautiful? Very cold, very cold. Oh, these are my kitties, my, my housemates, my love. That's Katie. And that's her son, Rocky, who really doesn't like to be picked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I'm a Texan, and that really applies to me. I tend to think out of the box. And it shows up in my art. Yes, this is our first one. I heard about that's your favorite. It is one of my favorites. It is one of my first ones that I did. And I was surprised how it came out because it reminds me of the flow of life because things seem to be going along just fine. And all of a sudden there's a disruption and it goes out again. And then we follow it with other oops regard that's okay <laughs> yeah you continue i will go find a i want to stop in the right art yeah yeah you and can continue this is your favorite so what kind of uh, material you will use this is this is canvas and i use primarily acrylics i do okay. a lot with resin in my acrylics and i use different medium or media for my acrylics such as alcohol ink and mica powder things that make colors and in more intense or give it a different flow. It's more, it's really called flow art or fluid art because it is not just dipping your pen in or your paintbrush in paint and then putting it on the canvas. It is mixing it in various ways and putting it all on the canvas, either one color at a time to blend in or it goes into a, a picture that you have no idea what is going to come out. And what I like about it most is that it creates wild imaginations. That's the name of my art company is Wild Imaginations because you can see so many things in every painting. For instance, in this one, I call it my flow of life because it's typical. You have a nice long flow and then all of a sudden something disrupts and then you go on to something else. But what I also see in here is right in the middle, I see a bird with his wings up. Oh, yes. Down, almost like a, a dinosaur bird of some kind. Yes. And over on the other side, I see a big mouth of something. I don't know if the bird is about to eat something. So it's everybody sees something different. And that's the beauty of the art. And I can put a canvas away for a while. And then when I take it out, I'll see something completely different. So the techniques are very simple at first, it seems, but in reality, to get the right colors, the right texture, it really does take a lot of time and a lot of practice. Mm, I like a wire imagination, right? Yes, 
I love the name. <laughs> so you can use your imagination. Anything is possible. Oh, yes. This one I like to call my spring rain because it reminds me of raindrops in a puddle. But oh, I also raindrop a in a puddle. Yeah, wow. I see a big swan right in the middle uh, around the darker colors. You'll mm -hmm. see his head and his long neck. Is he swimming in the water? You see the his the raindrop is swimming in the water. Wow. Yeah, you, I don't know if you can see my finger, but right in the middle there, there's the the swan or the duck. But it just sort of is the way to me water flows. And when I step back from it, I can see so many different things. That's the beauty of this is you never know what you're going to get. You can start out with one idea and end up with something completely different. Wow, lovely. A new oh, one? Green is not my favorite color to work with, but this one I absolutely love. It is, it reminds me of a green flower just starting to blossom, just starting to open up after the spring rains. And the flow and the texture of it, I see little things fl floating around in it or little critters it sort of like in little bugs in it. But it's, it's just one of those things that just is, uh, I connect with it. And that's the beauty of flow art is you can connect with it and people will look at it and go, oh, I don't see anything. And then I'll go, well, close your eyes and open them again. And they'll go, oh, there's the fish. I see him eating something. Mm. <laughs> so it's wow. just a, a really fun Well, he didn't mention, I, now I see the fish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you can see how the flower petals kind of open up. Mm -hmm. These, what kind of uh, material media you use? This, this is all acrylic, it's still acrylic, and I use different types, different brands of paint, acrylic paint, because each one is a little different. This one I used uh, one called, a brand called Mon Monmart, which is from Australia. And it's a very high quality paint and it gives you really good lines and textures and it blends well with other paints. So in this one, I had green, yellow, and white, and as the colors blended together, you can see some other colors in there, like a very pale, almost chartreuse green and a very pale brown and a little bit of gold. So the colors come together to create the mm -hmm. overall effect. Of and the how case. can you create so many bubbles? Well, there's a technique that we can use for bubbles, and that's when we add silicone. Silicone can actually create a, a, a disruption of the paint and it mm. causes a little bubble to come up mm. and a lot of people like a lot of bubbles mm -hmm. I sort of am I like them but they're they're not always showing up where I want them to show up and sometimes they show up in places that I really am glad that they're there <laughs> so even the bubble is an accident even the bubbles are a surprise. Uh, <laughs> it's like a full of Christmas, of you well get imagination to too. <laughs> cool. Um, oh, yes. Uh, one of the ways that we create great texture and flow art is to add embellishments. And this is called a geode embellishment. And it's as if you had cut open a big rock and inside you find all of these crystals ah. and stones. And so we have a painting on a canvas or, or a tile. And then we will uh, use various types of glues and outline where we want the, the stones to go. We have different colored stones, different kinds, different cuts. So some of them are more glittery than others. And you can put them anywhere on the canvas and then you seal it and it the stones will stay on there so that's this is one of my geode paintings wow so that is sparkling thing what yes. is it? those it's are glass those are, crystals, those are crystal crystal rocks and some glitter i think i used some glitter on this because we use glitter ah. too <laughs> we can and how about the black part the black part is probably my black paint where i've used it as an outline to kind of give the, the stone uh, a, a line of flow, if you will. 
Uh -huh. And then it's how, it's how mother nature grows things. You know, mother nature isn't just perfect in every, every color and every line necessarily. So this way we have a little bit of line to determine how things are flowing. For instance, this may be uh, with the blue in the background, it, it can be a big rock in the middle of the river or a blue, blue. Wow. He also like the like. open up of a geo surprise. Yeah. If you slice it in Do you half. know Dallas have a patio association? I think their member would love this kind of arts. Oh, it's really like you open a rock and then you suddenly find a crystal inside. <laughs> yeah, and it's fun to do. I actually had a, a friend who wanted to have two large paintings done and she wanted a lot of crystals and a lot of glitter. And I kept adding it on and taking pictures and saying, is this enough? And she goes, no, I want more. And I go, is this enough? No, I want more. And it was just <laughs> hard work. It was yeah, if so you hate beautiful. something, oh. yeah. In Chinese, you hate something shiny at home, yes. always bring you a good luck. Yes, yes. Silver is very good luck. Now. This, uh, this one is a technique that I use uh, called bloom technique. And the paints are relatively very thin compared to some of the other techniques that we use. Mm -hmm. And I use a hair dryer. Oh. on the canvas and I'll use the hair dryer uh, uh, to, to blow things out in different directions and I'll tilt it a little bit I'll tilt the canvas a little bit to get kind of <laughs> what I want to look now this <laughs> this uh -huh. one I know everybody laughs at me when I say it but I see a unicorn right in the very center of this one I wasn't going for that but I see a unicorn wow <laughs> so you that. use so your wild imagination in your painting oh yes oh absolutely absolutely uh -huh. it's just one of those things that uh, there's there's just all you have to do is just look at it and you'll see different different things in it different so critters. what kind of paint are you use when before you blow this is all acrylic but we thin it down with something called floetrol or water uh -huh. or both and when we place it on the canvas then we can blow it with the hair dryer. And then if we want to tilt it, we can tilt it a little bit, or we can even take a straw. Sometimes I'll take a straw and blow out a certain area that, you know, maybe, well, there's too much paint over in this corner. So I'm going to use the straw to blow it out a little bit and create more of a flowing effect. Ah. Flowing effect, if you will. Okay, wow. So I was wondering, um the center part is you blow from outside to inside or from inside to outside it depends on what we want to get sometimes if it's a, if we put it in the center like all the paints in the middle we can blow from the inside out or we can blow from the outside in it wow. depends on what we're doing we can do lines we can place lines horizontal vertically diagonally and then use the the uh, blower to blow in any direction we want wow. so it depends it just depends on what we what we want to do for the day sometimes mm -hmm. I never know what I want until I get into my studio and start messing around with the paints and go oh I think I'll do this technique today or oh I, that's a new one I haven't don't know how to do that one I'm going to try it and so then it'll end up sometimes really good sometimes it gets scraped and redone so but that's typical so I saw the black, uh, blue, and white. Uh, um, did you pull like a, something like a black first layer and then white on top over it or not? Mo yes, most of the canvases are either white or black, at least mm -hmm. for me. You can have any color you have. Most of us use a base paint and mm -hmm. that is what smooths our canvas so that our paints will flow on it. Mm -hmm. uh, typically I use white or black depending on what I'm trying to get. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are certain colored paints, especially if they're like day glow or glittery, then I'm gonna want a black paint or black base in order mm -hmm. to bring out more of that color. Ah. It, it varies. It, sometimes I'll use a different color. I'll use a gray base depending mm -hmm. on what I want to, what the colors I want standing out most. 
-hmm. And usually uh, it, if I don't like it, you can just paint over it. You can scrape it off or let the paint dry and then paint over it with another base coat and keep going. Yes, That's keep going, good. keep on, <laughs> keeping keep on. Get what you want. Every artist <laughs> can go whatever mm -hmm. the feel you want to That's play. Right. That's right. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I like it. You say keep on keeping on. <laughs> yes, you just have to do it. You just have to keep on going. Is yeah. this one have a glitter or no? No, this one doesn't have any glitter. It was just, uh, it was an experiment I was using with the blue and the green. Uh, mm -hmm. I had just bought some, a different color green paint and I wasn't sure how it was going to work. Mm -hmm. So I decided to put it with blue and white and ultimately it came out a little bit lighter than I thought it was going to be, mm -hmm. but I actually like the way the colors work together. See like right now on, uh, when we face our computer on our left top, uh, look like there is a butterfly with uh, like a black and it had a teeny tiny white dot. Yes. Is, yes. is this come out from blower or? It just, it's how the paint flowed. It's just, ah. it, you never know what it's going to come up with. And the thing is, you can, you can have a perfectly good canvas and go, this is exactly what I wanted. And you leave it overnight to start drying and setting. And you wake up the next morning and there's something totally different because the paint moved. And you go, what happened to my butterfly? <laughs> my unicorn, where did it go? Yeah, you might fly <laughs> away. <laughs> flew away. Wow, that's a how fun play with arts. It is, it is. And this is uh, your oh, studio. <laughs> yes, that's me uh, playing. Oh, yes, I'm playing with resin. And resin is a very toxic uh, hardener. It's used in boats and planes and cars and everything else. And in order to use it, you have to practice safety guidelines, wear a mask, wear glasses and, or goggles and gloves, because uh -huh. once you get it on your skin, it's, it doesn't feel good and it's really hard to get off. So look at like there's a mold in the box. What is it, is a mold? That was a mold that I was using to, to make a candle. Oh, um, so like you have a, what kind of paint that you will use? Uh, this is the, the same kind of paint, the acrylic paint, or uh, sometimes I'll put glitter in it. Sometimes I'll mix it with the resin. That's what I'm doing with this one, is I mix the paint and the resin together. Uh, you can do it a number of ways. You can put resin in and then put paint in on top of it after it dries so you can make layers or you can oh. blend it in the cup and then put it in the mold. The molds are all silicone and then you let it dry and then you just remove the mold and there's mm -hmm. your piece. Okay, but it look like, a, is this easy to remove the mold? Sometimes they are, sometimes it depends on the mold. Uh, if the molds are really small and they're very tight together, not a very big opening, it can be hard to get them out. Uh, if there's um, a lot of points, like with the, the pyramids that I make, sometimes the, the mold isn't a really high quality mold and the point doesn't come out or something like that. Sometimes it can be hard, but we have mold releasers that I can spray inside the mold first before I put the resin in. And that helps to, to be able oh, to. What will you spray? Mold. What kind of oil or it's something? Called, it's called mold release. Oh, it's mold release. It's specifically for silicone molds so that uh -huh. you, so it doesn't stick and stay and it makes it easier to get it out. Okay. And then the mold is like a stretch. So when you yes. dry, you can like yes. a rubber, you can open uh, it and then easy to take it out. Yes. This is, oh. this is the, the candles that I make, the candle holders. And you open it, uh, once, you, once it settles and dries and, and firms up, then you wow. start moving it around and loosen up the mold and then you start peeling it back and the candle would just pop out. Uh, you know, uh, so Very this favorite. is the lily pad, uh, lotus flower candle yes. holder, yes. right? It is. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. I remember 
you surprised me after you leave in Dallas because I know when you in Dallas you are Chinese doctor but yeah. after you leave in Dallas I saw all different kind of art you try and it all are beautiful it was surprised me <laughs> well I was doing some of it in Dallas but I didn't uh -huh. have the time to do it and when I decided to retire I decided to start back uh -huh. doing some of the artwork and uh just kind of gotten into it and and I'm I'm practicing but it's only a couple of days a week and I've limited the number of patients I see so I can really have time to play and do the fun things that I want to do that I hadn't done for 25 years of <laughs> Wow, look at oh. now we are in another beautiful picture and shining. Yes, this is called Diamond Dots. This is a little bit different. This is something I actually just started about a year ago. A uh -huh. friend of mine sent one to me and I didn't know what it was. And then I started messing with it and I've fallen in love with it. It's actually, in, you can do a custom, but there's places where you can buy pre-colored canvases and they have a sticky surface and with the canvas comes these little tiny beads not much uh, bigger than a pinhead we call them drills it's like and a pinhead yeah they're teeny, teeny tiny. tiny teeny tiny they're like little rhinestones but there's no hole in them so uh -huh. there's a special tool that has a wax on it and you pick up the, the bead the drill and then you put it on the color and they're numbered or lettered. So you'll know, for instance, all of the, the white uh, shinies are number ones or the, the uh, blue ones or turquoise ones are a number A or a G or something like that. And mm -hmm. so they come with these and the tool and the wax and you just okay. have to do it bead by bead by bead or drill by drill by drill. It's very tedious. But oh my goodness, it is so rewarding when you finish to look at it because you start out or I start out like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get this thing done. And then you just do a little bit of time. And usually I'll work a couple of three hours because it's so tedious, it's very tiring. And I will take sometimes several weeks to complete one. But when I do, I just, I just love them. They're such fun to do. And anybody can do these. These are just they're so simple. They really are. I mean, mm -hmm. you can get very complicated ones. And so oh, is this a pattern? They already give you the pattern and then the color. Yes, yes the pattern oh. pattern is colored already. And oh, it's on okay. the canvas. So the canvas is a colored sticky pattern. And then mm -hmm. you just you just sit there and put the drills on, put the little beads on. And they're all different sizes. You can see in this one where we've got some little teeny tiny ones, and then we've got uh -huh. some bigger ones where the whites are uh -huh. and then the moon half moon up there in the tree uh -huh. wow you I, I can understand that that when you do it every, even you take a week uh, but every day you see those are part of the shiny bee mm -hmm. blink to you <laughs> yes and it, it gets you know it, every time that I sit down to do it's it every go, moment every bee when you put it down it's all a beautiful moment oh yeah yeah, hmm. it's really good for hand-eye coordination. It's good for focus. It's good for just having fun. So hmm. it's multi-purpose as well as being beautiful at the end result. And there's wow. many places you can get these. You can get them at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or Amazon. I get a lot of mine from a company called Fan Cells and they're in China. And so they make these beautiful, beautiful colors. Uh -huh. and canvases so I have right now I think 34 canvases uh -huh. waiting to be finished <laughs> uh -huh. I figure that'll last me the rest of my life <laughs> wow mm. I feel you can pour the raisin over there and that would be like a beautiful shiny brick oh yes yes mm. and this is another way that we embellish our our canvases I have a stencil or you can get a stencil and you can either color it in or you can outline it I just did the lotus flowers on this when I was practicing with the, uh, the new technique mm -hmm. which I didn't 
particularly like after all, so I probably won't do it again, but I didn't like the technique. So instead of just throwing the canvas away, I put the, uh, did the outline of the lotus blossom. I keep saying I'm gonna go back and fill it in with a different color on the blossom, but I haven't done it yet. So it's just mm. hanging on the wall. <laughs> okay, you can continue create. Oh yes, oh yes. So you Here's do the, the, the color first. That also yes. gold, uh, is it gold? Gold and... Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. it, it's gold, silver, turquoise, and uh, blue, I think. Wow. And uh, I wanted something different, but it didn't turn out the way I wanted. So I was going to throw the canvas away. And I decided to, I had just gotten this stencil. And I decided I would just try stenciling it, outlining it, and see how it would look. And I think it will look better mm -hmm. if I go back and put color in instead of just leaving it as a black outline. I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet. It's in. It's one of those that I'm going to finish it someday. Mm -hmm. So I have several of those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, this is one of my resin candle holders. This is one that's a little more difficult to deal with because you see all of the spikes. Mm -hmm. And in order to get it out of the mold, it's really hard to, to get all of the spikes oh. without breaking them off. But it's a lot of fun. So with this one, uh, I put a light colored in first, let that dry a little bit. Then I put the darker blue in, let that dry. And then I finished the base with a light green and uh, a sort of a goldish little bit of glitter in the bottom. But you then, have a, something between the, the light and dark. It's yes. a blurry area. But because yeah, you put your first layer dry, about that's this blur where, area, how you create? That is when the resin, I kept testing the resin and I wanted it to flow like that. So I was waiting for the resin to get to the point where it was almost hard, but mm -hmm. not so hard that it couldn't be uh, penetrated by another color. So mm -hmm. that's when I put, and I kept testing it with a toothpick. And that's um, when I put the blue in because it gotten to that point. And then I put the blue in and I let it settle and dry completely before I put the green base on. Mm -hmm. So, it, and it, it, when you're working with resin, unless you're doing a pour of all one color, if you're trying to do layers like this, it takes a lot of time because you have to let the resin, one layer of resin dry. And that's particularly true if we're doing layers or putting something in for instance, the candle holders or mm -hmm. the pyramids that I do. And it, it's just a matter of being patient with it. And sometimes I'm not very patient. I want it to hurry up and set, but it goes at its own pace. So, so this mode was open in the top or in the bottom? It was open in the top. So it, in order to get this mold, the, the pointy parts were down turned down and solid. Mm -hmm. And then the round part was the open part. Mm -hmm. That's where I begin to pour. So it's it works in reverse. Oh. Just like okay. the other candle, my lotus candles. So you need to design your brand need to reverse. <laughs> yes. Yes. You have to think in reverse because if you think, oh, I want, you know, I want the the dark blue to be on the bottom, you can't put it in first. You have to wait mm -hmm. until the others get set first. I, I like it's a you put process that. always. Mm, I like it. you put some glitter. Make it oh, so yes. mm. The world needs wow. more glitter. And this is a ring inside a mold mm -hmm. or an, uh, just a, a mold. A friend of mine's daughter had this ring. It was just a little cheap ring and she broke it. Mm -hmm. And her, she came to me and asked me if I could fix it. Well, I couldn't fix the ring, but I told her I could put it inside a mold and make a necklace out of it. So that's what hey, I did. That's a good idea. Yeah. You know, we all have a unforgettable or one of memorable mm -hmm. the jewelry. Like yes. a, some old antique mommy's uh, ring, mm -hmm. you know, but it's already out of style. Mm -hmm. and you can use that to create uh, art 
or you know they can give it to you you can help them to make art design you can give them a consultant and help them their dream come true oh yes oh, right yes. they can give you the, oh, yes. the jewelry and then you will help them follow their design you can help them to finish like a, as a from the jewelry to a uh, art pieces yes yes mm. i will give Very everybody fun. patty's contact number <laughs> at the end <laughs> you might need it <laughs> Yeah, it's. It, I was surprised it came out as well as it did. I was very, very pleased. That's looking down on top of it, mm -hmm. and she was just thrilled. I with the the mold. Then I there's a little hole up there that I put in there and put a, a gave it to her mother for her to put whatever kind of chain she wanted. I didn't know if she wanted a gold one or if she wanted a silver one. So mm -hmm. uh, she said her daughter was just thrilled with it. Because her other two friends had the same ring and she wanted the same ring too. So that's mm. why I was just glad we were able to do it. Mm -hmm. And this one, like a pendant, I don't know if it's yes or no. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's the same. It's the same ring. It's just a different angle and the light is different. But oh. I did use glitter in the heart, just a little bit of glitter. And what you're seeing is the same ring from the top, looking down on the top and oh. how the light will shine on the glitter. Wow, so you can make an old ring as a pendant. Hmm. Yes, oh yes, yes. Cool. We can make them as, as a pendants or bracelets or um, you know, uh, something like a, I don't know, just a, something to sit on the desk. I saw the blue dot. I saw the blue dot. Those blue dot are rock or is um, a sequence? Uh, this is all glitter. These are all oh, glitter. Okay, go cool, glitter. Yeah. yeah, this is all just little glitter. And mm. just the way the light is, is shining on it, that makes a difference. This is one of my uh, pyramids. This it's a small pyramid. It's only about two or three inches tall. And this, this is, is my where, favorite with a yeah. flower petal inside. I really yes, like it. Flower petal. Oops. Like it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Wow. That's, that's one of my favorites. We actually use, uh, can use flowers in it. So this is the dry flower. Uh, this is, yes, these are dried flowers. I've tried using live flowers. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they'll work and sometimes they don't. They're very iffy because sometimes they will lose their color as they start to dry and change in the, the resin. I've not had as much good luck with it. I know some artists have, and I don't know what they do to it. I think they use some sort of a sealant on the flowers. And I just haven't bothered doing that because I can just throw some, well, not throw, but position some flowers like this the artificial flowers in there and I know they aren't going to change their shape or change their color and I'd much rather take my chances with that so mm -hmm. and this is another one where we did layers where I just did layer and layer and layer and when it came time to put the flower in I just put the flower in and put a little bit of resin up to the base of the flower so that the stem was still sticking up and not in the resin and then I was able to tape it so it would stay in place while the resin dried. When that resin layer dried, then I pulled the tape off and put more resin. And then for the base, I put the colors and the green, the greenery in there too. Mm. So it, it was, it's one of those that just was kind of sitting on the desk or on my table, work table, and just doing a little bit at a time. Mm, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, it's one of my favorites too. Pick me. <laughs> you found <laughs> free art. This yes. is made. Yes. There it is an has inter been. international organization called Art Abandonment. And what we do as artists all over the world is we'll take a piece of our art. It can be jewelry. It can be a rock. It can be something you knitted or crocheted or a tile or a canvas or whatever, whatever you want it to be. <clears throat> and you put it in a container or leave it out like this and take it to places. For instance, my favorite places for doing this is restaurants. I'll take a 
put it in a little plastic baggie with the, the note of pick me up. And on the back side, it gives the information about the art abandonment. So people, somebody can come in and, you know, maybe they're having a bad day and they pick this up and they go, oh my goodness, I've got this bracelet. Isn't this beautiful? Oh, wow. So they get to keep it. They can mm -hmm. pass it on or they can just leave it right there. If they don't mm -hmm. want it, Maybe somebody looks at that and goes, ooh, you know, I don't, I don't like that design. That's not my color. They can just leave it there and somebody else may pick it up. I have mm -hmm. left uh, painted rocks in parking lots and all over the desert. I do jewelry. I do book markers that I've done with the diamond dots. And it's just such fun because you never know who's going to pick it up. All you know, you, it's all anonymous. I don't leave, most of us don't leave our any contact information on there because we want it to be anonymous and just spread kindness. That's the Whoa. Focus. So it, it is just such fun. I, I go on hikes in my neighborhood and I'll leave something like I, I make tiles, uh, the, mm -hmm. the really low tiles and I seal them and I put a cork on the back and I put them in a bag with a pick me up sign and I'll just put them along the sidewalk or put them on top of a a, a play pen or you know a play thing in a playground or just anywhere just my fancy it's like oh I think I'll put it here and then we just leave it and somebody will pick it up and I'll come back maybe a week or so later and it's gone so I know uh -huh. somebody got some joy out of it I don't oh, know maybe wow. they threw the trash I don't know so you put <laughs> your I painted rock or some of your jewelry you seal with uh, contact uh, information something and seal, you put it in the desert. <laughs> I don't use contact. I don't use my contact information. I just, uh -huh. yeah, it's anonymous. I, I don't, people don't have to know where it came from. Actually, I had a, an art show at my house here just before Christmas. And this lady came in and she was looking at my tiles that I had out on the table. She says, oh, are you the one that leaves the tiles or the artwork on the, on Franklin a hill street and I go that's me <laughs> she goes oh they're so beautiful I have one <laughs> I go, oh my gosh I didn't even know <laughs> so it's fun to it's wow. fun to know that people actually pick these things up and sometimes that's all they need just to have a little bit of happiness for a few minutes and it just makes their day wow that a your life will inspire me. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, right now, what we see that the bracelet is so beautiful. This middle stone you create, right? Yes, that's from acrylic flow. Uh, I just with these stones that I get, they're clear stones. They're called cabochons, and you can use you can dip them in any kind of paint. You can. I've even dipped some in. Uh, uh, hot water with, or not hot water, but warm water with nail polish floating on top and you dip it in and you get some sort of design. And this one I think was just one of my flows that I had some leftover paint. So I just started kind of dripping it over and showing this is what showed up. So this is the clear stone already. You mm -hmm. dip in the... Yes, it was, clear, it was a clear dome stone in other words it's not flat it's it has a, a ridge to it a top to it and it's mm -hmm. called a cabochon mm -hmm. and this is what a lot of jewelry is made from and the bracelet itself the silver bracelet is just something that I then took that stone and glued it in there with really strong e2000 or e6000 uh, glue mm -hmm. so it would stay there so you know it's like I have one on and it's raised above the the bracelet itself so i love doing them. so They're beautiful thank you wow if someone pick it up it will be uh super happy oh yes i hope so i hope so but i saw you have some hard pattern there mm -hmm. how you make those pattern like uh, on the paper on the paper there uh -huh. yeah mm -hmm. those are just little patterns that are uh, that come with we can print off some of these from art abandonment and that's just one of the ones that they had and they had the little hearts there and they're kind of the the flow 
uh, paint that we do, the acrylic flowing that we do. So that's why I selected that one. It's just you know, a, uh, the mm, one that we print off. In the, the second off. one, I feel that the brown line, like a stitches and really, mm -hmm. I feel this heart give me a lot of healing power. Yes. For the yes. one who has been have a surgery yes. or, you know, mm, thank you. Keep it, pass it on here for someone else. Yeah. Now these are four canvases that I work together. Sometimes I'll put canvases next to each other, or I will use a certain type of, of uh, tool or whatever to play with, and I'll put it on all of the canvases and then see what comes out. This is done with a, I believe this was done with a tool that's kind of like a comb. And when I put the paint down after I get it settled to where I want it to be, then I use that comb or that brush or whatever it was. I don't remember which one it was now. I've got a drawer full of tools and I just kind of swipe through it and try to flow it through from one to the other so that we end up having very similar texture and design in both. And these four came out like this. <laughs> Again, mm. not knowing what I was going to have, but in this one, I see the little face in the, like somebody looking through a fence, the two eyes looking through a fence. Mm. And the, uh, the other one on the right side reminds me of peacock feathers. You know, you get a close up of the peacock feathers. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, again, different. Now, the blue and white one, that is, oh, are we there? <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. So, so these are, are dye tips or, or tri trips. Tri -trips. Yeah, they're really like uh, the peacock of feather. <laughs> mm -hmm. It does, it does. Uh -huh. And again, I never know what I'm going to get when I try these techniques. Mm. Cool. And this is called cyanotype. This is something that I just recently discovered. Evidently, it's been around for a very long time. But what it is, is very special type of paper, almost like photographic paper. Mm -hmm. And you put it in the sun and you lay something on top of it. You leave it for about 15 minutes, depending on how much sun is out. And then you remove the article rinse off the paper and let it dry. And this is what you end up with is the various design based on whatever you placed on the paper. It's, wow. uh, it, 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 and it's made some really cool designs. I really like it. And a lot of people will color it in. Now I haven't started coloring it in. To me, I just like the, the stark difference in the, the design and then the surrounding color with the blues, because as you see, the blue is not just flat, even the, the paper itself has a lot of texture in it. You can see the various design and how it kind of, mm. the edges aren't very sharp on the white part. It sort of flows into that. Is just, this blue color will affect by how much sun, sunlight? Uh, yes. Yes, the, the longer you leave it out, the probably the darker it'll be. And it, I've le even left it out on cloudy days mm. and you can still get some color. It mm. just depends. Usually it dries darker than when you first look at it. Because when I first started doing this and I would pick it up and I would go, oh my gosh, it didn't work. And then I rinse it off for about three minutes under cold water and let it dry and then all of a sudden there's this beautiful blue behind it. Mm. You know, you need to write a poetry about those kind of art mm. because you have a sunlight and this need a time under the sun. And if you have poetry with this, that's a time in the poetry. That's beautiful. Ooh, look at that. That's, yeah. I hadn't thought about that, but yes, you're right. Poetry would go well with this. 
these are plants that I took out of my backyard and just placed things on the, the blue. You can see the difference in the colors. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. The blue, it depended on how long I left them out there. But I was uh -huh. just thrilled with the results. I never, did, I just didn't know what I was going to get. And uh, I, when I took them in and rinsed them off and let them dry, I couldn't believe how, how they all came together. So. Mm. And you use the real nature yes. flower stick uh, to do uh, it. Sticks and flowers and rocks, mm. grass, leaves. Mm -hmm. I did all of that out wow. of my backyard just picking up whatever had fallen. Hmm. And I really like the one where it looks like there's a little bug flying, starting to fly into the flower. <laughs> hmm. So what kind of paper you say? This is cyanotype paper. Mm -hmm. It's a special type of photographic paper. It's one that is uh, sensitive to light. You have to keep it covered. When you have whatever you put on there, you have to cover with a flat, clear plastic in order to keep it from moving number one but also keeping it still and and letting the the sunlight um, mm. go through it so yeah it, it's just a special paper that you can order from anywhere well I get mine usually from Amazon mm -mm -mm. sorry a little bit blurry here let me because I I feel the ballet dancing here <laughs> I feel like a two shoes of ballet dancer. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And this is before just, uh, I had taken one of my resin Hamsa hands, it's a incense burner, and I put that on there not knowing what I would get. So mm. now it looks like a little critter is down there underneath it, looking at it going, what is that big old hand there? So again, I'm see I see all things, I see things, a lot of things that other people don't see. <laughs> yeah, like a, like a right now in the right side corner, it's like a sandal shoes and then the left, like a ballet shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that surprised me. Wow, you need to write a poetry about this. I like it. <laughs> and then the, you can saw the with art. The poetry is so with art together. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. That, that would be a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As, you're as you're saying that I can think of all things to say about all of this. Makes mm -hmm. me want to, to write some things. So right now in the middle, what's your idea for this? For the one in the middle? Mm -hmm. Right now? I see... I see uh, I see a bird flying away, mm -hmm. big wings out, and I see something that looks like a a, a gecko or mm -hmm. some sort of a critter that looks like he's going to eat him. Mm -hmm. And for that, I would say, if you find negative things coming to your life, just fly, fly away. Mm -hmm. mm, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> hmm. This is another type of embellishment. I did this for a friend of mine who is also an oriental medicine doctor, Chinese medicine doctor. And mm -hmm. it was her birthday. And she loves tree of life things. Mm -hmm. I used a stencil. That was another canvas that I didn't really like. And I decided to uh, do a stencil for it just to try it over that and see how it would look. And it turned out beautifully. It, it was so beautiful that this particular one, I just happened to keep a picture of it for you, but this one I sent to her for her birthday mm. and she just absolutely loved it. And I still have the stencil so I can make more, but I know I could never duplicate the background. It would be a different background altogether. Mm. So you yeah. make it a background first yeah, and this, you do the stencil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you make the background, you let it dry out and then you put the stencil on it and very carefully color it in with whatever you want. I just used black because I thought that would be more intense, give mm -hmm. it a three-dimensional flavor. 
And what kind of paint that you use for the background? This, I just used a felt tip uh, art pen. I can't remember which one, it may be Penze. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember which pen I use, but it's a, a, it has a little tiny tip on it. And mm -hmm. I would outline and then go in and fill it in. And when I took the stencil off, if there was anything that wasn't quite perfect, I went back with the pen and, and mm. finished it out. So, fun my favorite uh, again. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. This is something I just finished. I have a friend who loves Africa, and I had this little board. It's not a very big one, it looks bigger in the picture. And I had been teaching a class, and we had some leftover paint. I decided to just throw the paint on this board and this is what came out, the colors in the background. And I kept looking at it and I thought, I gotta throw it, I'm just gonna throw this away. I, you know, there, there's nothing I can do with this. It's really ugly, there's nothing to it. And then I realized that I had a stencil of animals mm. in, in the, like, I don't know, Serengeti someplace, somewhere in Africa. So I put the stencil on and Filled it in. It's not a very good stencil. I don't know. I think I picked it up somewhere real cheap and it wasn't a very good stencil. So it didn't make really good. So I did what I could. And then I put a uh, resin over the top to seal it all. And now it's a charcuterie board. So her birthday's coming up and I'm going to give it to her as a gift. I put a cork on the back mm -hmm. so that it wouldn't slide. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, it turned out really nicely with the, yeah. the stencil. Because it looks like something that would be in the, the background of Africa. I've never been there, but mm -hmm. I don't know. It just looks like it. And actually, I like the stencil. It's not perfect, the line. So they have a, some nature yeah. outline. I like that. A little bit blurry outline there. Yeah, that's, that's the idea. It worked out well. Yeah, and also, so the all, uh, after you finish that, you put a resin all over your painting? Yes, I put resin over it. You can do that with the canvases and I have done that with many of my canvases. Mm -hmm. It makes a very shiny uh, color. Are you just brush it or you just like the flow? Uh, you just pour it on and you level it out and let it sit and then it dries. It looks like glass mm -hmm. so that you can wipe it off or wash it off. I wouldn't wash it off with hot water, but you know, you can just take a wet towel and wipe it off and dry mm -hmm. it off and use it mm -hmm. over and over. Yeah. Oh, and, I have and a that's question. The beauty of resin. It's, it, it doesn't, it, it takes a lot to hurt it. So a lot of my paintings I have put resin on and it makes it very glass-like mm. and makes it last longer. I saw the many um, the, in the Dallas gallery, a lot of the modern art artists, they use the resin a lot. Oh, yes. yes. They make a shiny on their painting, kind of yes. like it can last forever. And a lot of furniture makers use resin, even the you know, professional ones. You can take it, you can resin just about anything and mm. it will last much, much longer. And of course, there's different grades of resin. If you're going to have a boat or a piece of furniture in your house, it's going to be a different grade than what we use. Oh, in the yeah. I saw, I saw That's someone it. use the fossil and then yes. pour the raisin and make a table. Yes. Yes. Mm, you can do that. Cool. And it protects it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Resin is wonderful stuff, but it is tough to work with sometimes. Mm -hmm. it, it, most it's kind of have... very good on this painting. The oh, background yeah. is perfect. Yes, it did turn out nicely. Mm. This is uh, one of my samples that I had done for my friend that wanted a lot of glitter. She actually liked another set that I did for her. And so she got that one and I kept this one. But these two I put together. This is a sample of, or example of when I put two canvases together and I flow the paint over both at the same time. Mm -hmm. Actually, the one on the left is sold. I just mailed that off last week to a friend of mine in Dallas <laughs> who oh. saw that. She didn't want both of them. She just wanted the one. So I just sold her the one. But the other one still it has its own beauty. And I just love doing the double canvases because it just makes such a, a 
a statement. And with this, this is one that I could do a lot of glitter on or make a lot of geodes on because the way the, the wave of the flow is, it would be very beneficial to do geoding with that. Mm. So anyway, that's, that's a larger canvas. I work from small eight and a half by tens to, you know, whatever the bigger canvases are, whatever size we need. Mm. Oh, this is one of my favorite techniques. This is called string pulling. And this is a technique where we, uh, we create a base paint and it can be any color. I think with this one, I use sort of a very pale uh, violet color and you dip the thread or the chain or whatever beads, a string of beads in the paint. And you can use a single paint or you can use multiple paints and then you put it on the canvas and you kind of lay it in a circle and then you pull it down gently and it creates these flowery effects of what looks like blossoms or blooms. And I've got several of those paintings that I just absolutely love. This one came out a little bit more pale or paler than I had planned, but I liked the way it actually ended up looking. I can see a face, like there's a face there that looks like he's looking at the, the palm frond here, or maybe the one over there. Mm -hmm. He's got a headband on and headdress on. Anyway, again, my <laughs> wild imagination on that. Mm -hmm. But it's one of my favorite techniques. And you can wow. go back over it and do several different sizes of the mm -hmm. flow. Oh, and uh, I will, uh, I will think about that. Uh, um, it's like a plan, right? I like it on the left side. You still left some original mm -hmm. string yeah. over there. Not yeah. all, all are pulling. Yeah, so I no, like this. Yeah, that texture. was that was sort of one of those things where. Um, I used another technique just to kind of pull it out. I wanted the center focus. I didn't want the whole canvas to be string pulled, okay? Mm -hmm. So I kind of used different, uh, I tilted a little bit and I did a swipe on it. So yeah, that was what I did mm -hmm. to make that look like that. I really wanted that center, that, those center fronds to show up. So I would have liked mm -hmm. for the colors to have been a little bit darker, but. I learned a lesson with that. <laughs> yeah, and then the color difference. Wow, you are very talented. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's like an antique, you know, like a, it's kind of like a, another paleo thing. It's like an ancient plant, you know. <laughs> we never yeah. know, they might really have a, this original fern. <laughs> You're going to have to write some poetry for my artwork. Might be, we I can try it in the future. <laughs> And this is some of my rock painting. These are rocks that I leave around for people. Again, I place them everywhere. I place them in parking lots and in just everywhere, wherever I happen Beautiful. to be. Beautiful. You finish wonderful. and then put it everywhere. <laughs> yeah. You are a difference maker. <laughs> Someone will got this stone, they were super happy. Well, I enjoy making them and I have so much stuff. I have so much artwork. Look, I run out of wall space. I run out of box space. I just have to, I have to get rid of some of it. So what better way than to share it with people and let them enjoy it. Let them mm -hmm. have some, some fun for a day or geo. Oh, I know with some of my little uh, ladybugs, I like to make different kinds with them and I'll put magnets on the back so you can use them as a magnet. Mm -hmm. Some of the larger stones, I can't put a magnet on, but some of the smaller stones, I'll put a magnet on and people can use it. And the uh, other side on the back, are you still let them keep a nature rock or you paint it uh, all over? I do. Sometimes I will color it black. And there's a group here in El Paso called, called EP Rocks. Mm -hmm. We have a Facebook page and 
uh, since I've been here and been a part of that, I will put EP rocks, I'll paint it black or white on the back and then put EP rocks on Facebook. Mm. And then I'll just my, my initial sim symbol on there. Mm. And if it's big enough, I'll say keep, leave or give. And that way people can make a choice. If they're little tiny ones like that, I don't bother doing all of that. Sometimes I'll just leave it black or leave it, leave it natural. I think the little desert one here, I just left natural. That was an accident. <laughs> so I ended up uh, making a little desert scene out of it. Mm. Today, our artist story really touched me. It's you create those beautiful art and put it in the desert, put it in the somewhere, and then surprise the people got this art. <laughs> Make a like difference it. of their life. You never know who needs a little bit of something. You know, maybe they're not feeling well or they're having a hard time in life or school or something like that. Mm -hmm. And just a little something to make them smile a little bit. Hmm. We've all had hard times and sometimes it's the little things that really help us get through them. Mm, cool. <laughs> now these so, are the art we just saw you hang on your wall. Right. This is on my wall. This is another one. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, I, just on. I can go back. Out. Don't worry. <laughs> Let me no, let me go back. I realize those two aren't exactly. Hey, the this one flowers. like a flower is really is is the string the, pulling. Both of those are string pulled, and both of those are resined, so that they're very uh very shiny, very glass like. It looks like there's a glass frame on them. But yes, that's those those are again my favorite ways of, of doing the str string pull or chain pull. I think I used a chain on the bottom one and I used string on the top one. So there's a little bit of difference in the, the uh, design of the, the flower or the design of the front. Yeah, I don't know how you create also a flower petal, but it's so beautiful. So okay. naturally too. Yes. Like a I real like one. It. I don't know I how to get it, them. but it's beautiful. I like it. Thank you. And you, you put a shiny raisin on top of it. You know, yes. you know, this kind of, it's like a tile. If one day, maybe you can be a, in a, how you say the interior designer. <laughs> you can co-op with some uh, tech, uh, how you say architecture, you know, oh, build wow. a house. Maybe all the window or all the door have a one piece of glass, like this flower in the middle of mm -hmm. all the door in the house. No, oh, that the house is yeah. totally different. Yeah, it is. It is. I hadn't thought about that, but yes. Yes, yeah. go find the architecture or architecture. <laughs> Use your tile for their <laughs> interior design. <laughs> Good, idea. Good idea. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Maybe this is many audience when we share this again you can think about use those art in your house more so yes. you can design like a a theme for the house mm -hmm. yes you can you can definitely create themes around these sorts of things oh yes those are my vases vases whatever you want to call them and a little planter uh, and these are also acrylic flow, acrylic pour, where I've just taken a plain vase or a glass one, and I turn it upside down and brace it on something, and then put pour paint over it. Usually I will put a canvas underneath it, and then after I have finished pouring whatever design I want on the, the vase, I'll remove the vase and then use that paint overflow on the canvas and see what I can create with that. Mm, wow. All the artist friend can try. <laughs> you make <laughs> the old, uh, no use uh, cup uh, container, a uh, new life. Oh yes, oh yes. I have a lot of- Maybe a flower vest. That I can do that. This is one of my diamond dots plot. Uh, I received uh, a request about a clock 
And I found this at one of the companies I buy the canvases from that it had the design and the mechanism for the clock. So, and it's a diamond dots, you know, the little tiny beads that I was talking about. And so I just did the diamond dots for the pattern and put the clock together and it works. <laughs> I was surprised it actually worked. And it's a peacock, <laughs> it's really pretty. peacock a cloud. Yeah. I also have made a clock with a, a, radio, a, a record, a, one of those 78 LPs, mm -hmm. the old, old fashioned ones. I did an acrylic pour on that and made a clock out of it. I, that I still have at home. And these are some mm. of my bracelets that I make for uh, using resin, uh, using, I'm sorry, using the cabochons mm -hmm. with my acrylic pour. Uh -huh. They're all different colors and different designs. I just love making them. Because okay, I, I will later on, I will stop sharing uh, because of this uh, picture I didn't enlarge in good way, but I will, you know, stop soon so uh, people can see your uh, real one in you. Okay. Okay. And these are my yeah, necklaces those... that I make with the cabochons and the acrylic pour. And these are the loose cabochons that I have that people can select. And then I don't have any more earrings. I'm out of those. But uh, if they have their own special chain or a particular color that they want a, a ribbon mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. they can just buy the cabochon itself and then create their own necklace. Oh, so this necklace earring. You can use your art. Yes. Oh, yes. These your are accessory. All... Mm -hmm. These, yes, absolutely. Oh, this is so beautiful. Yes, these are some of the, the cabochons that I've made. They have they come in square and round. And you can see the back is silver on some of them or brass or uh, black or whatever. And is this the one you dip in art? The clear stone you dip in the art? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it is. Or I'll pour it over the stone or I'll dip it in the uh, nail polish and warm water. Mm. And again, you never know what you're going to get and you have all sorts of visuals in it so you can see all kinds of things in it. And what's really fun with these necklaces is when someone goes, oh, isn't that a pretty necklace? You can ask them, what do you see in it? And they'll look at it and they'll go, oh, I don't see anything. And you say, look again, close your eyes or look away and then come back and look at it again. Oh my gosh, I see a bird right there. Look at that bird. Or, mm. oh, I see a snake. Oh, or I see somebody's eyes or look at that nose. And so people begin to really appreciate it and everybody will see something different. Or if, they'll, or if they say, oh, I don't see anything, you can say, can you see the little bird in it? And you hold it up for them and they'll go, oh, there it is. Yeah. And it becomes kind of a game. <laughs> it's a really fun game and a wild imagination game to see what you can see. What is your brain telling you? Mm. I worry because I see a lot of monsters in my painting. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of dragons and dinosaurs and things like that. Wow. So. That's very hard for each one. You have a different design. No two are ever alike. Oh this yeah, is this, not, is, uh, this is this is this the flower candle. No, the yes, one. These on. are my resin arts. Yes, these are the the lotus uh, candles. Resin oh, that's candles. a resin art. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, the Hamsa hands are the uh, incense burners. Uh, these are just little flowers and cactus and things that I have the mold for. They're just sort of decorative. You can put them in plants or you can put them on something. Uh, you, and I, I know of one artist that has taken some of these and actually pasted them on a canvas to give a real three-dimensional approach. And I haven't done that yet. I haven't really had time to do it, but... Uh -huh. I, I like the center one, the centerpiece is like a, a little bit dish. That's a, oh, yeah. that's, a resin also? Bowl. Mm -hmm. that's a resin bowl. I made that with uh, using resin poured over a mold of a uh -huh. bowl. And then uh, it, it's a pretty complicated process, much more mm. complicated than the one because it's like, oh no, this is too much work. Uh, but I do like them. I've made a couple of them. 
these are tiles. These are for trivets like you would use in the kitchen or a coaster that you would use for your coffee or tea or glass or whatever. They're all have, they all have resin on them, resin coating, so they can handle heat. And so is this the real tile you pin on top over it? Yeah, yeah, it's a real tile. You know, so they like really can you use it for the kitchen top. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for the kitchen, yeah. you know, stove design or anything. Exactly. Yeah. If you have a kitchen with a lot of black in it, you can get a tile made with a lot of black with a, a contrasting color. Uh huh. And resin it. And there you have it. It will thin out. I put a, either a cork or a felt on the back so that it doesn't scrape and it doesn't slide. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, I love making these. There's, I just love making the, the tiles. They're so much fun. And I, these are, I love making the oh. candles too. Okay, hold on. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, those are, those are candle holder. Mm-hmm. Uh -oh. <laughs> they run fast. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. And you'll see down there the little hearts and things. Those are keychains, the, the diamond dot keychains. Oh, diamond dot keychain. Mm. Uh -huh. Diamond dot. A lot of those too. So, mm -hmm. yes, a little bit of everything. Oh. I'm and so that excited. is the board before I actually did the the uh, stenciling on it. And these mm -hmm. are coasters and tiles. Just to oh, they are, they are for the your drink uh, cup holder. Mm -hmm. Yes, to put your drink on or to put your plate on or oh. Whatever for the you kitchen want. when it's too hot it's for your hot pot. Oh, I love uh, I, I like this one. Uh, yeah. and that's why I put a close up. <laughs> <laughs> How you make this? That's a, kind of like a bubble and print. Uh, well, most of the time when I do tiles or coasters, it's with leftover paint or I'm tipping the canvas and pouring paint off instead of throwing the paint away. I'll pour it on a tile or a, a coaster and see what I come up with. So there was evidently some painting that I was doing that had these colors in it and had a little silicone in it because it has a lot of, of bubbles in it. And this is what we ended up with. So it just, again, it's, you never know. It's one of those things that I, I don't like to waste paint. Mm -hmm. And it's a good way if I'm doing a lot of, of pouring off, I'll either use another smaller canvas or I'll use the tile or the, the coaster tile and make something else with it, which is why I have so much artwork. <laughs> so for example, if in the future, when we share this video, uh, our interview, if some of friends, they, they have a remodeling, they can give their theme color in their kitchen or in whatever in their house they can give you and you can give them some like this tile design right yes yes i i do uh, i've done quite a bit of you can do customer work. design yes where people will say i've got this and i want these colors and i will go well do you want something really busy do you want something kind of calm you know we'll, we'll talk about a theme and then I will probably do four or five, if we're doing, for instance, tiles, I'll probably do four or five tiles of different ways for the customer then to say, oh, I really like that, or no, that's not quite what I'm going for. The beauty of all of the acrylic painting and the acrylic flow art is if you don't like it, it's easily, uh, we can remove the paint, we can wipe it off, we can alcohol it off, we can soak it off, uh, or we can just paint a base paint over it and start all over again. So it isn't like it's, uh, oil paints are much more difficult to work with in that regard, at least to me they are. And this is just so much easier. So if you say, I've got a pink kitchen and I want a pink tile, I go, oh, how about this style? Do you like that? You go, oh, that's a lot of busy. I don't like all those bubbles. Can you do something without the bubbles? And I'll go, sure. So I'll try again. And then we'll get 
what you want because I like to please the customer. Whether I like it or not is irrelevant. What's important is what you see in it and what you want for your life because that's where it's going to be. And you know, Patty, <laughs> I, will, I will suggest you maybe make a, a simple catalog, maybe with 10 star, like one of these like this. And then you have uh, some uh, uh, other kind, you know, <laughs> kind of like a 10 style and the uh, customer design, they can choose their color, but they can use the same style. So easy to know what they want. Like the right. corner here, you have we the, yeah, right? We could, we can yeah, you probably need to make a, like a catalog, like a 10 different kind that's, of yeah, that's style. Probably a good idea. Yeah. And so they can well, start from there. So, yeah, okay, really so for example, they want to right now on the right side corner, you know, this flow mm -hmm. kind or the mm -hmm. one we just talk about, you know, mm -hmm. sure. So they can, and then they just tell you the color. Yeah. Then you can, you can and try the, the style and then with their color they want. It's, it, it's impossible to duplicate it exactly uh -huh. like. Yeah, it's not exactly, yeah. but uh, kind of like but a, same uh, colors get a simple idea. Can do yeah uh -huh. yeah i like this geo kind too uh -huh. yeah lovely okay i think we can trickly run this is out of candle holder yes these are all my candle holders in place of things yes paperweights and uh -huh. i really like this bow <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you put a more sequence, more shiny. Even the is there is a diamond on the top. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> oh. I play with a lot of stuff. It's just whatever is is in my mind at the time. That's what I do. And the the triangle ones. There's actually four of them that make a circle, and they're uh, they are coasters. But I made the uh, the border really thick with glitter and stones, and the the center part with gold stones and glitter, mm. and it's just so much. It's just overwhelming. It's so much. So <laughs> maybe they can started, they can design design whatever match the their kitchen tile. They can have oh, yeah. the same kind of design of the their cup uh, the candle holder. <laughs> Yes, yes. Oh, yes. We can do the candle holders in whatever color you want. However, a lot of glitter, not a lot of glitter, single color, multicolor, whatever. Mm. Yes, it's all doable. And now I see the corner on the right, left side, the, uh -huh. the quarter of the circle. What is that? Uh -huh. It's like a geo kind of pattern. Yeah, it's the geo. That's when I was talking about, about doing all of the edge and a lot of stone and doing the gold and a lot of stone and glitter. Uh -huh. And it was, it's supposed to be a coaster, but I don't think it's, I don't think I left enough room to put the cup or glass. So oh. I just kind of use it as a design, but uh, it's a, a mold that has four pieces and it's this pie shape. Uh, mm. It's a lot of fun to do, but this particular one would probably not be very functional if you want something functional. Uh -huh. And these little candle holders, you just put the little uh, LED light in. I don't recommend using a live flame, but the little LED lights and some of them are translucent. You can see through and some mm -hmm. of them are opaque and you couldn't see through them though. So, oh, and this is another one of my uh, diamond dots paintings that I did. This was one that I did early on. And these two also are diamond dots. So the owl is gone. He was sold. Wow. So those diamond dots uh, will take a time. Oh, yeah. For, mm -hmm. The diamond, depending on what it is, it, it can take anywhere from a couple of weeks to six weeks to do. Oh, what is it? These are my bookmarkers. These are my diamond dot bookmarkers. Wow, diamond dot bookmark. Yeah, yeah. And they have a can I order thing. can I order as a earring? <laughs> <laughs> well they're pretty they? big. They're about six or seven inches long. <laughs> so I you like could have it. really long earrings. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I don't recommend it for earrings. <laughs> <laughs> well, so these are the teeny tiny dots. Yes. 
Yes, if you if you do a close up on it, you can see how tiny they are. And uh -huh. it's very it's very tedious, especially when you have a lot of colors like this, because mm -hmm. you have, have to keep going back and forth and back and forth to different colors. Now, a lot of people, a lot of the diamond dot artists will do, they'll select one color and they'll do the whole canvas in that one color, you know, where like they're all going to do all of the little blues or mm. all the little reds and they'll go back and do it. But I, I can't do that. I have to do it by, I, I prefer to do it by section. And that means going back and forth and back and forth with a lot of the colors. Oh, you want artist's way. <laughs> My way. Oh, <laughs> yes. I like it is in this picture. You say my way. <laughs> Actually, that is thanking the mountain gods. Uh, anytime I go to a peak, uh, I always raise my hands and thank the mountain gods for a safe trip to the top. This is in Texas? Yes. Uh, I actually, cannot I believe I saw Texas is a plane. <laughs> uh, I can't remember if this is in New Mexico or, or here in the Franklin Mountains. Um, mm -hmm. This may be, hmm, I think this may be a, a, one of the mountain ranges in New Mexico mm -hmm. that I did. Yeah, Anthony's, I think that's Anthony's Gap. So that's in, yeah. And this one is Guadalupe Peak. I did that last May. It's 8,500 feet high. Mm -hmm. It is the highest uh, peak in Texas, highest mountain in Texas. Highest mountain in Texas. Where yes. is it? It's over east of El Paso, about three and a half hours, almost four hours. Mm -hmm. And it take it took us exactly eight and a half hours to go up and down it. It's a, it's the hardest hike I've ever been on. Wow. And, uh, I didn't know Texas have a highest amount. <laughs> yeah, yeah, eighty five hundred square, eighty five hundred feet high, mm -hmm. and it's, it's hard rock all the way up and all the way down. And this mm -hmm. is in our local Franklin Mountains. This is a little over five thousand feet high, uh -huh. and uh, another one of my trails that I did. I get to the peak, peak, get to the peak, and then this is in one of my local hikes in my neighborhood. So is it you you yeah. where you live right now? Yes, this is where I live right now. Okay, I heard this about you wanna uh, you gonna away. move out uh El Paso to uh San Antonio. What happened in El Paso right now? Oh nothing. Oh well, there's a lot of going stuff going on here, but there's uh you know it's it's just uh, uh, a lot of stuff happening here that's out of our control. But the reason I want to move is I, I love the desert, but I need a little more variety. Mm -hmm. And I'm a, I, moving here has helped me realize I am a big city girl. I love my big cities <laughs> because I can get everything I need without having to use Amazon all the time. Uh -huh. And I have a, a lot more cultural diversity mm -hmm. in places like San Antonio and Austin and Houston. But I've lived, I've lived in Austin, San Antonio, Dallas. Houston, and I hadn't lived in the West Side, so I decided to live in El Paso for a while. So now it's time to move on, and I'm going to go back to San Antonio because it has a lot of access to the hill country for hiking and a lot of trails. Mm -hmm. San Antonio is fabulous for biking and hiking and all the parks and things that they have. So I'm looking forward. I'm looking for a house right now. I have a really mm -hmm. good realtor who's helping me. And I was just there a week or so ago looking around and decided that, yes, that's where I want to be. So uh -huh. that's where I'll be going. I don't know when, probably before June, because my lease is up here in June. So I'll be moving on. Uh -huh. But I'll definitely I, still continue my artwork. <laughs> uh -huh. It has I, to go with me. <laughs> I heard about the, the, um, the border immigration. Is that part of you? Or you heard something? Story where, where there. I, am, I live on the west side, so I'm I'm not as accessible for the uh, the immigration issue. But yes, it is affecting El Paso. It is affecting everybody here in mm -hmm. many ways. And uh, I've I've had the opportunity on hikes and things to meet a lot of the border patrol guys, and they're they have a tough job. It's it's a very tough situation, and I just my heart goes out to them goes out to the people who, 
you know, are, are trying to get into the country. And I don't have any problem with people coming in. I just want to, to do it in a safe manner. And that's not being done as well mm -hmm. as it could be. So okay. anyway, but it's, okay. a, it's a fun, it's a very uh, fun town. It, there's, especially if you like a, a Latino culture, there's always some party going on somewhere, some something happening that's wonderful. So, <laughs> okay, we saw a lot of uh, pictures, but right now, can we show you, uh, can you show us some real one, the jewelry part? Sure, so sure. We can well, feel it. Okay, I hope you can see this. this yeah, is, yes, this yes, it's necklace. perfect. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, it's a square, and its primary colors are sort of pink and green and or, or turquoise. Yes, and yes. Uh -huh. You can do a little bit back wall, we can see it. Yeah, yeah, about there. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, so, so is this so your uh, art? So is uh, each individual? Is the yes. only one in the whole wide world? It's the only one in the whole wide world. Uh, <laughs> then we have, then I have some like on this little black string or black necklace that has uh -huh. a little glitter on it. Let's see, can you see that? Uh huh. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, a little bit backward. Uh, yeah, a little bit in the middle. Yes, there. Yes. Yeah, there. Beautiful. And, we cannot see uh, what is it, but it's okay. Very, very beautiful. Yeah. And I, I have one that I like that I wear. I don't know if you can see it or not. Probably. Uh -huh. Yeah, we can <laughs> see it. We can see it. Yes, yes, yes. Beautiful. And then, I, I yeah. like the unique, uh, all the style. Oh, yeah. There's all different styles. And, and this one is like one of the cabochons <laughs> that you can get without a, a, a necklace or anything. And you can just make your own. Uh-huh. You make your own. Wow. Cool. So the cabochon is already made. You just need to put whatever chain or ribbon uh, or whatever on it. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have the bracelets. Oh, oh, that's the most beautiful one. I saw the one you give away. But uh -huh. yes, this one. And yeah. what I like about this is it fits all different uh, size wrists so you can squeeze it. Uh -huh. But I also like it when I wear my sweaters. Uh -huh. I can put it on my sweater uh -huh. like this. Ah, oh, so you can yeah. keep it oh. in place. <laughs> beautiful, so beautiful. Functional bracelet yeah. too. And Is then it... I have these that are little leather, uh, leather bracelets of different. Uh huh. Colors. Oh, you put in the with the and they have a rubber and it says oh. love at the uh -huh. bottom. And wow. there's that's colors. more modern yeah. young girl like that it is that that's really a lot of teenagers seem to like those uh this is one of my little pyramids ah. uh, this one has a little purple wire in it i don't know if you can see it or not oh you put a piece of wire yes it's a little curled up wire ball oh that's clear wow little, that's a very good idea and little stones around the oh, bottom oh beautiful so that's a you know one of my little small. You know, I recently yeah. have a one art that I used the major taper, and then make a music note. Oh yeah, I will show you later. Okay, <laughs> and this is uh, like one of the lotus candles. Ah, uh, wow! I think uh, the Buddha, who, the friend who like Buddha, Buddha, oh, yeah. they like to use those lotus. Yes, and I use the little. Oh, you can't really see it, but you still mm, yes, yes. Candle. And I like it. you put the sequence shining around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is one that had the glitter in it. <laughs> so those are raisin, you won't melt when you do the candle holder. They won't melt. No, no, but I recommend using the little LED light, oh. of the, <laughs> okay. the live candle, the modern one. It, it probably wouldn't hurt it. I also have a little Things like a dragonfly. Uh huh. Here, a little dragonfly necklace. Uh huh. See him here. Oh, you pin the stone. middle part. Oh. The little stone right in the middle of his of his wing. Uh, yes, cool. And let's see. Oh, my tree of life. I love these necklaces. This is just a little black string, but it has the tree of life. Oh, okay, okay. In the middle. Oh, can't really see it. Uh -huh. There you go. 
We also oh, yeah. yes, thank you. Thank we you also design. open anyone who in our audience see if you like to ask any question, either Chinese or English. Oh, okay, we can ask. Oh, oh, that's the bookmark. Okay, I won't be used <laughs> as the <laughs> earring. No, I don't think it would make a very good earring. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> One day. <laughs> Oh, that's a bookmark. That's a beautiful bookmark. Thank you. I love making those. I just made some. Yeah, you know, I, I, uh, Linko, uh, uh, the, the one who really good at the uh, uh, Japanese flower arrangement, my friend Linko, um, you know, Dr. Lin, she is here. Actually, when I saw you have uh, those, uh, um, cup or the, uh, vest, you repaint it mm -hmm. with the new color. And I've I've been I've been thinking about uh, Miss Lingo. I was thinking about she she would do the uh, flower arrangement. She do very cool, uh, the the flower vest. And mm -hmm. maybe one day she can paint the one by herself. <laughs> After <Maybe>. our show today, Dr. Ni Jiao Shou, have you heard? Just put the old vase, put it on the vase, and paint it with a new way of doing it. I hope one day you can do it by yourself. <laughs> 那个花瓶来插花 <laughs> wow, Katie was here Thank you Judy, Jen, Helen Galaxy, Tab Okay, Betty, Becky Oh, Becky, you also came Okay, uh, Nancy Yes, Michelle Okay, welcome uh, Hi, TN Yes Oh, welcome uh, If you have any question 有人要问问题都可以问 可以打开你的麦克风 林教授你刚刚有没有看麦克风你刚刚不知道你没有开麦克风你刚刚不知道有没有看到他把那个卡盆把它画腐朽为神奇用一个艺术的方式来重新喷的那个卡盆我刚刚好跑去倒了一杯
it uh, it's already designed, so I don't have to do all of that. I've tried doing a lot of metalworking, and I just don't like doing it. It's not for me, so it's easier for me just to order the the frame molds or the what they call the findings for it. So, yeah, so, yeah. So basically, the uh, those uh, rose stones you made uh, um, out of the mold, right, to fit into the frame you bought ready-made. Yes, the, the frame I buy ready-made, and then I order the clear cabochon, they're clear glass, and they're okay. different sizes. So yeah. I have to order the right size for the, the frame, and then that glass size is what I color to put then to glue on to the frame. So what kind of glue do you use? Uh, there's, there's several different kinds. The one that I use most, I think it's called E6000. It's uh -huh. a jewelry making frame, uh, a jewelry making glue. And it seems to, to hold really well. I've also uh -huh. used, um, uh, what is it, Gorilla Glue? And that oh. works well too, but overall, I still prefer the E6000. It's just, it's what I've worked with for years when I started doing all the jewelry making and the beading and that sort of thing. And it's, it just seems to last longer and hold tighter. So that's what I use, it's the E6000. And you could get that anywhere. Yeah, I yeah. think the Walmart have that at 6000. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. It's a beautiful presentation. You, you make so many different styles. Uh, I mean, uh, even the, the, you use the media so, so widely and then uh, create so many beautiful items. Uh, <laughs> Envy, you are so talented. Oh, gee, thank you. <laughs> I'm well, having well, fun. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, I want to I want to try that chain, uh, chain thing, you know, the pulling uh, for the, yeah, it looks like it's so pretty. It's like a feather to me. Every single once you pull down, it's so pretty. Yeah, you thank you. It, you can do it several different ways. And if you go on YouTube and just write in chain pulling acrylic pour or something like that, you will uh -huh. find all different kinds. You can use string, you can use a beads, you can use chains of all different kinds. And each one is different. You'll get a different effect. You can combine it and there's different ways of utilizing the paint either in line or across the lines or dipping it into a cup, whatever. And each, each one is different. It's just a lot of fun to play with. So good luck with it. You'll have a blast. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I try to. So I, I think even for your tile techniques, that's unique too. You use just the plan tile and then you put the acrylic onto it and then after that you you put a resin over it to make yeah. it shiny and also more protectively right yes oh, correct yes that's a wonderful technique to know thank you thank you <laughs> thank wow, you becky <laughs> becky is a, a another wonderful artist too <laughs> no 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 i just yes, like you did another beautiful it. thing no. right so <laughs> I'm really compared to those, uh, like a, like a, um, the, the <laughs> No, I think uh, you or future have uh, those new tile. You can try a new tile in your new house. I don't know about that. But thank you so much. <laughs> for, thank, for you. Your wonderful thank you, question. Becky. Thank you thank so you. much. Anyone have any other question? I think someone had asked or hey. typed about hey, the... Betty. Oh, Betty. Yes. Are you talking to me or who is? Who is talking? Whatever. Oh, I was talking. I think someone oh. had typed in uh, where did I, what kind of paper did I use for the cyan, oh. what kind oh, of paper okay. that was cyanotype and where did I get oh, it? Shani, what's Nancy? Okay, Nancy, yes. Ni wen. Shani. Uh huh. What's Nancy? Yeah. Uh, you ask, you have a Patty, uh. yes. Patty, I just want to show you. Oh, okay, 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 I got it. I, I know. Okay, I want to uh, remove him. I want to um, Nancy I want, show us. Uh, I want to talk. Try. 
Nancy, you need to turn on, you need to add your video on. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's what her, she want to show her flow. <laughs> wow, I really see the bird. <laughs> Can you see it? Okay, let me see. Uh, yeah. Okay, I saw you. Wow, that's like a big bird there. Right now I saw. Thank you, Nancy. Do you have another one? Yes. Okay, can you show another one? Did she do cyanotype? Uh, in a canvas. Oh, a canvas. This one oh, looks I good. See. How about I see? But I just not use know. water, I guess. She used water. But I just... Yeah, I... Can I speak? Yeah, yeah, sure. I never use the media. I just use the water and Oh, yes, yes. I think that the beautiful. teacher didn't, yeah. didn't hear me. I'm speaking. That's beautiful. No, I, I, I'm not a use the media. It's like a. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to use the media. Another one. Artists don't. A lot of artists just use water. And sometimes I just use water too. A lot of people don't use Floetrol or use me any too. Facilities. You can get a lot of stuff with it. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, I all did those colors. Use the, uh, use the water. I show you another one, the stone. Oh, the stone art. Yes. You see oh. it? Yes, I see it. Wow. It's lovely. Nancy, that's beautiful. Oh, beautiful. You're a real artist, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a play artist. I just another I, one. Mushroom. 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 <laughs> Mushroom. Okay, the last one I have to show you. Oh my god. Oh, that's this one. pretty. That's cute. Go to the middle. Yes. Uh, Lady Buck. Wow, beautiful. Okay. beautiful. I want to say people guess. You know what's it? Taiwan. I'm not seeing it. I just Taiwan the black screen. Oh Taiwan. Yes. Wow, it's you find a stone like a Taiwan. Mm. Taiwan, the location it, it, it is the style. Oh, okay, oh. and I just you know. Oh, oh another one. Good. Another one. I should. Lady oh, bug. I like that ladybug. Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, can I that's steal fine. that? I'm gonna steal that design. I like that. <laughs> that's what. Yeah, I I try to I use a acrylic or painting. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Nancy. Thank you, thank you for sharing those. Yeah, They're wonderful. wonderful. Yeah, I, I will pull uh, Nancy being in the bomb, one of the bonbon artists speaker, so I will show her art that you see. Oh, good! Nancy I want to see that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anyone have a question? We have last one minute. Someone had asked about the cyano paper and where to get it. The where I had the you know the blue paper with the the white design uh -huh. from the sun. It's called cyano paper, C-Y-A-N-O paper. And you can get it at Amazon. So C -Y -A -N -O. whoever was asking, uh -huh. cyano paper. And you can get it at Amazon. And okay. you can get all different sizes. You can get real uh -huh. small to, to big. And ones. then can you uh spell in the, the pendant? What kind of rock? What what you say? Oh, it's a cabochon. C -A How are you spelling? C A B O. No, C A yeah C A B O C H O N cabochon. I think. <laughs> okay. C A B O C H O N. Yeah, I think that's how you spell it. Cabochon. Okay. And they come in different sizes. Yeah. Or okay, can uh, Becky Audi type in the everyone? Maybe C A B A. I don't know. 
Okay, yeah, capuchon. Okay, anyone? Thank you. Oh, okay. So thank you so much. Uh, it's a wonderful um, presentation. I really want to say, you know, what we did today, keep on keeping on. Every artist, whatever the field has planned yeah. that your life will inspire you and then uh, inspire everyone to, uh, to help others. I was oh, yeah. so surprised that you put your beautiful rock, beautiful art, presses in a desert and then in somewhere let somebody pick it up, have a surprise day. You know, a lot of artists, they are, don't want to sell them art. Don't say give oh, it to I others. Know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you know, because it's... they are so treasured to them when they painting, but you share. That's really surprised me. And then also a very good story of today to Thank share you. your arts to someone they may need it. Just like we shared a story today. Yes. Thank you. You know, it, my, my work is, is my, I can understand why artists have a hard time selling. I, I do too. It's like giving a part of me away, but that's okay. Because the more I give, the more I get. And it's not about getting. For me, it's about giving and bringing just a little joy. So I know what the art does for me for joy. If I can bring a little bit of joy to someone else then I'm happy. Thank you. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.